Hello, I'm the Game Professor, and welcome to Games as Lit 101. The discussion of what exactly gameplay is and how we should judge games based on it is still a popular one in the video game discourse, and I think a valuable one too. I mean, usually it's just kind of a toxic waste of time, but in concept, it can be helpful also. In previous videos on this channel, we've actually talked a good deal about the difference between interactivity and gameplay, and how a game without traditionally challenging gameplay can still be a meaningful interactive experience. But a while ago, I played a game that made me think more about the very concept of what qualifies as gameplay to begin with. That game is Tacoma from Fulbright Games. Fulbright is most famously known for their 2013 game Gone Home, which has arguably replaced Dear Esther as poster child for the genre derisively known as the walking simulator. While there's a lot more to Gone Home's complicated reception than its lack of traditional gameplay, it is one of the games most commonly thrown around when people complain about games that aren't even actual games, and this is the legacy that Fulbright brought into their release of Tacoma in 2017. Now this isn't an analysis of Tacoma, I certainly would not be opposed to doing that sometime later because I really liked this game, but rather, I just want to talk about the way the game's use of interactivity in moving the story forward interacts with the concept of gameplay that this genre is generally considered to not really have. While the definition of gameplay is pretty fluid, similar to the definition of game itself, there are a few generally agreed upon elements. Gameplay tends to consist of a variety of challenges for the player to overcome, and rules by which the player is to overcome them. There's usually both a win state and a fail state, so the player can succeed or fail these challenges by meeting certain criteria. Single player games following a story tend to have a variety of challenges based around these rules, and progression through the story, and to the rest of the challenges, is based on whether the player can overcome each challenge in succession. Those general principles are usually what we're thinking of when we discuss whether something is or is not a game. This is why the walking simulator genre is often derided as not being a game, because they're generally unconcerned with these elements of failure, success, and challenge, only with having the player work their way through an experience. We've talked in previous videos about how judging a game based on how closely it hews to those criteria is limiting and misguided, but Tacoma got me thinking about how we actually define those criteria in the first place and how we should think about them in the context of a more narrative-centric experience. Tacoma is a first-person narrative exploration game that finds you on an abandoned research station to gather data on what happened there. This is mostly accomplished by using augmented reality to access the ship's surveillance records and watch the events of the station's final days in real time, with vague holographic figures standing in for the six station operators as well as the ship's onboard AI, Odin. You see their story unfold in this manner as they try to deal with the crisis that took place before your arrival. There are no enemies or puzzles or anything to stand in the player's way. They just go from area to area of the station, begin a data transfer, and use the transfer time to explore the area and see what each of the characters was up to and what role they played in the crisis. In broad strokes, this story setup is a pretty good starting point for a narrative-based exploration game. Just explore the space station, find out what happened. But what makes Tacoma stand out compared to many games of the genre is the inclusion of a number of mechanics that give the player more of a hand in how they actually experience this story. Namely, the player has control of the scenes that are replaying in AR. They can fast forward, rewind, rewatch. This makes the player more than just a passive observer in the events, but an active one. For instance, they can watch the memory in full, then rewind so they can follow two characters who left to talk in private halfway through the event, or pause when a character brings up their own AR interface to see what they were doing on it at the time. This is the way the game involves the player, and at the very least it is absolutely a meaningful form of interaction. It turns the game into sort of a mystery story, and casts the player as an active participant sleuthing out the details and learning more about the characters, setting, and events. But it is still lacking those win and fail states. You can complete Tacoma just by moving from place to place, but you can't lose the game. There aren't even any obstacles to getting through it. The closest thing is occasionally needing to find a code in one memory that opens a door to another, and those are always optional. So you'd be forgiven for thinking it falls into that not-a-game category of video games, but frankly, I don't think that's the case. We just need to reframe the way we think of challenges, win conditions, and fail states. 
When we talk about these mechanical elements, we tend to keep them relegated to fairly traditional game design concepts. In Overwatch, for example, there are a set of conditions for winning, and they're all based on moving the payload across the map, or staying in one area for long enough without getting taken out by the other team, then victory is achieved. The challenge is in accomplishing these goals. Failure to do so means losing, success means winning. Even most narrative-based games operate on this logic. Everything from Bioshock to Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice to The Last of Us is just about getting from one place to another without failing. That's literally the same broad mechanical goal as Super Mario Bros. But how would that structure change if the goal was a narrative one instead of a mechanical one? If Getting to the end of the game and finishing it was easy, but there's something else about the experience, something along the way that we care about more and do have to work for. We might do better to try and identify a challenge somewhere within Tacoma's design and then work from there. If we look at how Tacoma is structured and try to identify where the challenge lies, I think we'd find that the game's challenge is in recognizing all the narrative threads and using that knowledge to know where we should look and what we should pay attention to in order to uncover another segment of the story. And indeed, even if it's different from most games we play, that is definitely a challenge. It's basically detective work. So if we've established a challenge, we can move forward from there. What's the goal? Clearly it's not simply to get to the end of the game, since you can do that without engaging in the challenge at all if you just run through and don't bother replaying scenes or following other characters. The goal should be the logical end result of successfully completing the game's core challenge, and moving to the location where the game ends has nothing to do with the sleuthing challenge we just identified. So if the gameplay challenge is to use observation and comprehension of the story's events to uncover more of said events, it could be said that the goal is to uncover as much of the story as possible so the player can come to the fullest understanding of Tacoma's story and the people who drive it. Or at least enough of one to be satisfied with the explanation for how things happened and why. A little more abstract than most games, for sure, but it certainly fits within the concept of game structure as we understand it. From there, we can even figure out a fail state. Again, it's clearly not a failure to get to the end of the game. Similar to the goal of uncovering the story, the fail state is a little abstract, but it's not too hard to identify. It's just the opposite of the goal. To go through the story, discovering little to nothing about what actually happened. So despite these elements not being empirically measurable in the same way we're used to seeing from most video games, there is definitely a gameplay structure inherent in Tacoma's design. The only reason it takes a little more work to really notice and understand is because the goal of Tacoma's gameplay isn't mechanical at all, but narratological. Gameplay and story progression are always tied together in video games, but usually it's a process of reaching goals in the gameplay that allow the player to continue through the story. The mechanical rules and goals are self-contained. You can succeed or fail to reach Ryan's office in Bioshock regardless of why you're going there. You can jump through the jungle and gather crystals in Crash Bandicoot without knowing what the crystals are for. You can hack and slash your way through hundreds of demons and angels in Bayonetta without needing to know why you're doing it. That doesn't make your actions worthless on a narrative level, but it does display how the challenges you overcome in most video games are more of a prerequisite to narrative progression than an integrated part of it. You win or lose regardless of the story, because the game is an entirely mechanical experience that leads to the narrative experience. But in Tacoma, the act of uncovering the story is the gameplay. There is a challenge there, and it's the very process of learning more of the story. You accomplish this by using the various tools provided by the game, the rules, if you will, along with your observational and logical skills to uncover as much of that story as possible. Your success or failure isn't about whether you get to continue through the game, or even whether you get a good ending, but how deep and rich your experience is depends on how much you invest in these challenges, and to succeed is to come to a full understanding of the events you're witnessing. When we put it into game design terms like this, it becomes pretty clear that Tacoma is indeed a game, with challenges and fail states and win conditions. It's a little more abstract because those elements have tied themselves directly to the story and our desire to know more instead of the mechanics and our desire to play with them, but it's absolutely there. And once we tie mechanics to storytelling like this, we bring the idea of gameplay out of the realm of strictly mechanical elements 
and into the more flexible realm of overall game design and storytelling, and it becomes clear that there's a lot of room for experimentation and originality in how we implement concepts of challenge and success into the games we play and the interactive stories we experience. And it means that walking simulators like Tacoma may have more to teach us about gameplay than we might have thought. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking, subscribing, all that stuff. The artwork for this episode is by my good friend Dylan, who is awesome and was also displaced by the campfire last year. I highly suggest you check him out and consider commissioning him or just helping him out on coffee. Links in the description. See you all next time.